So our friend here makes a lot of points about how everything that exists is dumb and, you know, the, the Donald Trump is oppressed and systemic racism doesn't exist and toxic masculinity isn't a thing and, you know, blah, 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 blah. And then he basically just uses some, like, pretty normal, like, conservative talking points, blah, blah, blah. So let's just talk about it. Let's just talk about it. If people want me to talk about this, uh, let's just talk about it. Black lives don't matter. White lives don't matter. We All right, so here we go. We're going to start with, like, nobody's lives matter. Everyone's equal. That's kind of the, the talking point. Women's lives don't matter. Men's lives don't matter. Straight lives and gay lives don't matter. Because you know whose lives do matter? Good people. I'm so sick of people thinking that they're lower class citizens because of the color of their skin or their sexuality. You don't so, like, that's right where we get the point of contention. So, basically, um, so I'm somebody who comes from the perspective that, like, we need to be, like, basically colorblind. Where, like, we need to stop, um, we need to get to a point where we kind of, on a personal person, like, a person-by-person -person basis, we stop acknowledging differences. Like, you know, we're, we're at the time where we need to start walking up to people and not going, like, oh, you're black, or oh, you're a woman, or oh, you're gay. Just, like, who gives a shit, right? Um, but, like, that perspective comes with the understanding that there are forms of like systemic marginalization overall. Um, we've moved so fast as a country so quickly in the past 10 to 15 years that it's so difficult for a lot of young people to understand a lot of like these situations going on. But like, let's honestly go through like systemic racism and you could argue like, Oh, systemic racism is illegal now. It's like, yeah, it is, but let's talk about it. So, you know, slavery, Jim Crow laws, redlining laws, all, you know, segregation, all these things that, um, <laughs> happened in life have an echoing effect on the, uh, honestly, on the inability for people to generate wealth. I would argue that capitalism isn't like racist. It doesn't need racism, but capitalism is inherently like classist, right? That's kind of like the point. And I believe in a class structure, but I also believe in like a more human first class structure where the bottom level uh, has a certain level of maintenance that allows them opportunity. Simply put, we don't really have that. And a lot of this is echoes from the past, right? So, for instance, um, you know, redlining laws, uh, corralling black people into particular areas, denying them loans, even though they may be they are equally or more qualified than white people. This is like back in the day. Uh, putting them into particular areas, uh, just generalized, you know, individualized racism, like forbidding them from like entering particular establishments or generating particular amounts of wealth, um, you know, all these things echo down. Segregation only became, you know, the Jim Crow. Oh, what is it? The the Civil Rights Act only became a thing, like, what, 55, 60 years ago? And we didn't even do it for black rights. We did it because we were uh, engaged in a war with Vietnam. And, like, it looked very hypocritical for us to say we we're trying to spread democracy while we didn't even have equality back home. And so, like, there's a lot of these things. And, like, I would say most people in general, conservatives, would say we do have a class issue. And I do believe that, like, the, the, solving the class problem would solve the racism problem overall, right? We have a lot of like the foundations of systemic racism or the foundations of stereotypes like that black people are generally poor or go to jail more or have to sell drugs and all that crap. That's generally comes from the situations that are generated by a lack of, of equity within the black community. Um, and so with all that being said, this whole video is basically like, hey, systemic racism is dumb. It's all your personal choice. But like, you know, I would I would just as a thought exercise, I would try to encourage all you guys to sit down for like a second and think about all the ways that you fucked up in life and all the ways that you were still caught and how you're still successful. You know, like think about that and think about how like small things could be the big drastic change in your life. You know, the difference between, um, you know, you fucking up in school and your mom or your dad being able to get you through something, you know, because in my life, I dropped out of school when I was 16. I was a very intelligent kid. Um, you know, I dropped out of school. My mom, uh, you know, she did. She was well off enough to push me into like some kind of a program that got me my GED. And then I got like a little game of web design degree. It was all bullshit. But, you know, then I got a job at a bus company because my uncle had the job at that bus company. My life, I wouldn't I wouldn't be here if I didn't have like those levels of nepotism and whatnot. It's like helping me to become successful no matter what. The low point in my life is the high point for a lot of other people that they have to work really hard to get to where I was. And I didn't have to do any work. I just kind of got a position. And it's like, you know, you know, race aside, it's it's almost irrelevant. It's more about opportunity. And since, like, you know, since 
black Americans and Hispanic Americans have substantially less accumulated wealth, um, of course you would be like, oh, they would have a more difficult time getting to where they were. That's not even to say of all the specific situations where I was at work of like racism that I saw. I've seen uh, an older white guy rip up and throw out an application because some Spanish a Spanish woman gave it to him. Um, and I've seen a group of like Hispanic guys be incredibly racist towards like a black guy that walked into the room. Um, you know, you see all these points of individualized racism that have social impacts and you have all these history of systemic racism going on. I just made a video yesterday about how like the bridges in my area were created so that inner city school kids couldn't get out to the beaches out here, right? Because they were too low and people are like, well, why don't they just take a car? And it's like, well, it's very normal for people in the city in general to like pull their money together and, and you can rent a school bus. Just so you guys know, you don't have to be a school to rent a school bus. Like school bus companies are private companies. They they want you to rent their shit. So it's normal for people to like rent a school bus and then go to like Splish Splash in the city. You know, take all their 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 friends, like everybody gets together, they pull their money together, the families, and then they throw their kid on a bus and they send them up and they all, yay. You can't do that when you're in the city. So you're lower income and you want to get out to like the beach out there and it's like almost impossible to do so in a school bus. And like that was why those bridges were designed. And then back to like you know even before like the GI Bill, you know Vietnam vets getting out of uh, uh, out of the war and trying to you know get like big government subsidies in order for them to like you know like low interest loans for them to settle down. And like those loans, since they weren't guaranteed per se, banks were like denying loan applications from black people. And it's like even to our vets, like what's your excuse for Vietnam vets not getting the state like for not getting access to to those things? You know, and it's like it's legitimate racism and that has a tremendous impact. If you were able to get a low interest loan on a house. That sets you up a lot. That that makes everything very drastic. And we're not like understanding these differences and we just don't care. And it's so funny because conservatives will constantly will shit on Joe Biden for his crime bill in like 1993, whatever. They'll constantly shit on his crime bill and they'll be like, oh, see, see, look, you're bad for black people too. And the question is, is like, well, that crime bill, you know, that's systemic racism, right? Like you're literally conservatives tend to reject the idea of systemic racism while also throwing systemic racism in the face of Joe Biden, you know? And it's like, wow. You know, you guys really, you, you just, you're, you know, you look, you look a little foolish by doing that. And so why I wanted to bring all that up was not only to educate you guys on the fact that systemic racism is very real, even if it's technically illegal, the echoing, the echoes of the past are still very relevant, but it's that like the idea of being colorblind and not seeing people for their individual differences is positive, but only if you do it the right way. The way that I experienced or expressed the idea of in, like of like colorblindness, and it extends through all ways of marginalization, whether you're a woman uh, or, or gay is like individually we need to not acknowledge those differences but we need to make sure we maintain them socially like or, you know what i'm saying like on an individual level we need to understand that like i'm a white me being a white guy doesn't mean i shouldn't be treating a black girl any differently than anybody else but from a systemic level we need to understand that there's an issue um to even go further for when it comes to like lgbt people you have to understand that gay people used to be denied jobs and like people you you young people don't understand this but um because of that, a lot of gay people aren't able to have like retirement. Openly gay people, they can't. Have, they don't have retirement funds. They couldn't really work, you know. And that's just another way of like wealth not being propagated to their kin. So let's move forward in this. You don't make twelve dollars an hour because you're black or because you're gay. It's because you're a fucking idiot. That, but like, yeah, if you want to use blunt language, that's the point. Because like, you didn't have the same. Generally speaking, a black person isn't going to get the same education as a white person. So like, yeah, by your logic, they're a fucking idiot. That's your perspective. My perspective is they were denied uh, the same opportunity. Right? I know that you're probably commenting right now saying you're a straight white cis male. No, I'm not. I'm just saying like, hey, you're very sheltered in your life. Guess what? I've also made a hundred thousand cold calls in a summer and taught myself how to sell. I also. Okay, so what? I taught myself how to edit video and start a content marketing company. So what? My my fiance taught herself how to edit videos so that we could do this. She edits my videos. You know, you're 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 being very anecdotal. And I know I was throwing out some anecdotes before. Um, the problem is, is like your anecdote boils everything down to hard work. 
when you don't understand like the levels of opportunity that have been presented to you, right? I've also done dozens of free videos for wealthy people that I wanted to surround myself with. I guess and like to that point, you're like, hey, I did so much free work for people. Well, let me ask you a question. If you are like, see, there's this situation I guarantee that you're in, and I was as well, where like you don't like need to work to support your family. But there's a lot of young, say, BIPOC people who have to work to support their family. And this idea of them giving away free skilled labor when they don't even have time to generate the skill is ignorant. Because they need to work. So it's like, hey, why don't you do free videos for this rich guy? It's like, well, I'll die if I could devote my time to that. You understand? You know, it's the same thing as like going to college, for instance, right? This whole idea of free college. Like one of the, the negatives to like free college is like, you know, if you're some fucking middle class white kid, you get, oh, free college. Yay. You, but you don't need to work. But all of a sudden you still have the issue of like other people, poor people, even if they're white. But, you know, again, generally speaking. Uh, the accumulation of wealth is, is drastically less for black and Hispanic people. You get my point. All of a sudden, like, hey, for college is free, but you still have to work to like provide for your family. So it makes things so much different. It's easier to get an education when all you have to do is focus on education rather than getting an education and having to work as well. Like, like you know, it's all about accumulated stress. I guarantee you that if you're one of those whiny bitches in the comment section, you haven't done half of what I've fucking done. Are you Honestly, I just don't think you've done a lot. You're promoting it as if you have, but you probably came from like a well-off family that allowed you the opportunity to do free work and then sit there and boast about it as if you did something special when like you really didn't, you know, like honestly, you know, you, it's great that you did what you did. Good for your personal individual experience. But like, again, generally speaking, people actually have to work and they can't develop these skills and they didn't grow up in areas where they were able to be afforded the same opportunity. And they grow up in like, of course, that there's cultures uh, that, that that advocate for you to not even go to school. And like, you know, these are all, you know, remnants of, of systemic racism. Are you really doing everything you can to be successful? Or are you just using the color of your skin or your sexuality to justify why you have not met your obligation to be successful? That yeah, so like, again, like I get the idea of like new age identity, like uh, toxic identity, um, you know, new age toxic identity politics definitely is, is victimizing people for their individual differences. And it's encouraging a younger generation of people to simply give up because of their identities. You see a lot of people who don't experience the type of marginalization, despite the fact that they may be gay, uh, black and whatever. And they don't experience the same negative impacts as like people who like, you know, uh, people who grow up in like a poor area and they weaponize that and use it as body armor to be like, oh, woe is me. I get that. But this is this is like we go from one end to the other. Like totally. One end to the other, you know, you got to find the middle ground perspective here. That's right. People are begging for the opportunity to live in this racist country. And because of that, you have an obligation. I hate this idea that just because something like, you know, oh, race. Oh, this country is racist. It is it's so it's super dead. Yeah, absolutely racist. Something being better than something else doesn't mean that it's perfect, right? So, like, yeah, it's better to live in the United States than fucking most other countries in the world. But that doesn't mean it's perfect. It's like it's it's like the difference between it's like, ah, my shit doesn't smell that bad. Yours smells worse. It's like, well, it's still shit. I'm not saying America's shit. My point is, is that you hate this comparative argument to dismiss, like, social change, which is what we're doing here to be successful and you're a fucking failure because you're a loser not because of your skin color your gender your sexuality black lives yeah so it's just like it's it's this whole video is so stupid honestly this guy very ignorant i mean this is just like hey i know if i make this whole video about like if i say like he's basically like, oh no lives matter guys ah, i gotcha you thought i was being racist and you're not but you're being ignorant so I want to say thank you so much guys to all my Patreons and a special shout out to my Papa XL Patreons. Without all you guys, I would just be some fat dude screaming into a microphone. So thank you so much guys. Mwah. I love you all. I want Papa gut to pee on my face. But just as a friend. There's nothing weird about that. I want him to pee on my face.